told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching Fruitex So yesterday I did the crazy experiment we booted the nothing was ported GSR on OnePlus Nord 2 And I can say just one word it's a dope experience So OnePlus Nord 2 converted to the Nothing Phone 1 Lite, the rumored Nothing Phone without the LED on the back. I use a DSU side loader to boot this GSI without permanently flashing it via fast boot. You can check that iCard video how to do that. Currently you can only use the DSU side loader with the Magix root because non root ADB shell method not working for now. But you can also flash this GSI permanently via fast boot, the video regarding that also given in a right side iCard. But my recommendation is to first try out using the DSU side loader because while using that application you can temporarily use the full GSI on your device. For check is it fully working or not and then if you are ready to use it as a daily driver then flash it via fast boot. This ported ROM can work on any device which supports the dynamic system 64 bit AB partition along with the OnePlus Nord 2. You just need the unlock bootloader and the android version about 10. So today in this video we'll check how this ported nothing OS works with the, all the features on the OnePlus Nord 2, what's working and what's not working, CPU and the GPU performance with the CPU throttling and finally I told is it daily driver for OnePlus Nord 2 or not. For other devices you need to check out all the details yourself as shown in the video. Now without further ado, let's get started. On a new adventure. First we will see the quick installation guide using the DSU side loader application. Here I am using the Pixel S Friends Android 12 ROM rooted with the Magix. It doesn't require the root access. You can use the ADB shell command to flash the GSI but for me it's not working. So I used the Magix root here. Download the full GSI image. Install the DSU side loader application on your phone. Open it and give the root access. Tap on the select GSI to be installed. Locate your file. Now select the user data partition size, default is the 2GB but as per my recommendation use at least 5GB to test different applications. Rest keep as it is. Now tap on the install GSI via DSU. Later app will prompt you to close the application. Now if you check the notification panel, you will see the GSI installation was going on. Once flashing gets done, it will ask to restart the device to boot into the new GSI build. So you restarted the device and boom, the phone booted with the Nothing OS boot animation who gets all the same device setup similar to the Nothing OS. On the home screen this is fully working Nothing launcher. Now we have fully set up the device, let's jump to the setting and the about phone. As this is the ported GSI, all the specification will be from the Nothing Phone 1. Like device name is Nothing Phone 1 but we can change it to anything. Software version is Nothing OS 1.1.3. Build number is as the Nippon GSI as this GSI is built by the developer Nippon with the Irfan GSI tool. Model number of this device will be shown as the A063. If you tap on the Android version, this is the Android 12 with the same material you clock easter egg. Android security patch is of July 2022. Kernel version is 4.14.290. Now let's check out which features of Nothing Phone 1 are available in the OS. We guess the fully working Nothing launcher. In the ROM, we can see new dotted body fonts everywhere in the system like on the home screen, in the widgets and the setting etc. If you check the quick setting panel, new big rounded quick setting tiles for the mobile data, Wi-Fi, hotspot and the Bluetooth are available and if you tap on it, we get the quick access to these all the settings without entering into the main setting. Whole quick setting panel looks completely similar to the Nothing OS. In the customization settings, who gets the all the new nothing wallpapers, who can also set the custom icons to the launcher and the drawer using the new set of icons from the play store. In the launcher setting, who gets the double tap on the home screen to turn off the screen and it's working. By long pressing on the home screen icon, who gets the new enlarge icon option and it's also working here. Always on display is working, to enable that go to the settings and under the display there enable the toggle always show the basic info on the lock screen. The AOD looks stunning with the new dotted font of new Nothing OS. Here comes the most unique feature of Nothing Phone that is a Glyph interface. If you go to the Glyph, we get the whole similar interface of Glyph like Nothing Phone 1. The difference is that the Nord 2 didn't have the Glyph lights on the back. 
If you check the ringtones, you guess all the ringtones and the notification sounds of Nothing OS with the glyph animation as I shown in the intro of the video. Except the charging meter, Google Assistant feedback and flip to black light glyph settings are available but they are of no use because our device didn't have the glyph lightning on the back to use this setting. In the main setting, you guess the experimental Tesla Connect feature, I don't have the Tesla to check this feature is working or not but it's actually asking to log in a Tesla control account. Instead of this feature, one interesting thing I found in the gesture setting, here you guess the one-handed mode, actually this setting is not available in my original Nothing Phone 1 on the latest Nothing OS 1.1.3. Double tap to wake the phone and lift the phone to show the lock screen, both the toggles are available but they are not working. Now let's check out what's working and what's not working. So if you check the Wi-Fi connection here, the Wi-Fi network working perfectly. It's connecting with any network, but if you enable the Wi-Fi hotspot with the 5Hz modem, Wi-Fi toggle will not work. But if we switch to the 2.5 network, it's working perfectly. This is the limitation here. Bluetooth is working, but when I connected my Bluetooth Oppo Ecno M31 earphones, it's showing status as connected, but with the error as a problem in a connection. I tried to play the media but the sound is coming from the speakers. Video on the audio playbacks with the speaker rod is working very well. Flashlight is working, night light is also working. NFC in this ROM is broken, it's not working. There is no any brightness issue in the ROM, it's reaching to the highest level but the automatic brightness seems not working. Now LTE networks are working well but the whole LTE HD calling is not working. So if you are using the Geo like only whole LTE calling networks, you may be in the trouble. But if you are using the any 2G, 3G LTE SIM like Airtel or V, then you need to set a network to the preferred setting as you can see on the screen. For that go to the dialer and then dial star hash star as 4636 hash star hash star. Now in the phone information tab select the network as the LTE oblique CDMA oblique EVDO PRL as you can see on the screen. Now your network automatically switch between 2G, 3G from the LTE to make and receive the calls. After doing this you can see I can make the calls and receive the calls and can also use the data speed with the LTV network also. GPS location is working very well, there is no issue here. OnePlus signature alert slider is not working but you can use the volume panel notification and ringtone sound toggle instead of this. So this one is the most anticipated part, hold the haptic feedbacks of the vibration motor in this GSI is same as the stock ROM. Even custom ROM till the date are not able to get the stock haptics. Notifications are well adjusted to the status bar. There is no any issue of notification display in the status bar with the punch hole camera location. So in the security setting, we can't get the fingerprint setting means you can't use the fingerprint lock. But you can set the screen pattern or the pin for the security lock along with the face unlock and it's pretty fast same as the stock Oxygen OS. We also get the unlock with the mask feature of nothing phone and it's working. Now let's check out the major part like the safety net. It's got failed because we booted this JSI with the root method but you can use the safety net bypass magix module. We just need to install the magix apk and then flash the magix module via the module section. Wide one showing the details of the device as the nothing phone one and it has the wide one security as L1. So we can enjoy the Netflix and Amazon Prime at the full HD resolution. Storage is encrypted on this ported ROM, so no worry about the personal data even if your device gets stolen. So I tested all the sensor using the Android application and the sensors like the gyroscope, proximity, accelerometer, magnetometer and light all are working perfect. But even though the light sensor is working, auto brightness seems not working. It may be some PHS treble overlay issue. I also tested the vibration, ear proximity, microphone, ear speakers, loudspeaker, multi-touch and display. All the things are just perfect. So major part comes here in the camera. This ported build didn't have the camera inbuilt but you can use the Google MGC build from the video description link. This is nearly fully working camera. Now it has the working night sight portrait mode for the front and the back camera. Slow motion video shooting is working first time without force close for 1x4x speed. But for 1x8 it may cause force close. Time lapse is fully working, panorama and photo sphere both are working. Video recording with the 4K 60fps is fully working now. Video stabilization is working with the different mode, HDR+, frame HDR+, these some advanced features are also working. Here is sample of portrait and slow motion both seems amazing. When this build gets fully stable, I will give the complete review of camera build next time.
Now let's check out the performance of the ROM in the world of the Geekbench numbers. I ran the test for the CPU performance testing and I got the score of 838 for the single core and 2745 for the multi core. These results are nearly same as the stock result that I seen for the Oxonos 11. For the GPU performance testing on the OpenGL I got the score of 5174 and for the Hulkan graphics score is 4215. These reels are also pretty good and same as the stock Oxynos ROM. So there is no hiccup in the performance if you enable the peak refresh rate in the developer setting of the device. Phone just feels like flying with the every touch and it feels better than the stock Oxynos ROM. RAM management, apps opening and the closing, animation all feels jitter free and smooth. Now it's time to test the CPU throttle. It's important to check if such ported GSR ROMs are able to maintain the CPU stabilization in heavy tasks. So I ran the throttle test on the 20 threads for the 5 minutes and enabled the temperature display to keep the watch on the device temperature. Without running the test temperature is between 42 to 45 for the most of the course. After running the test for the 5 minutes and when I checked the throttling I got the amazing result of 91%. My nothing phone 1 gave me the 94% result last time and the 9RT never went above the 90%. In the comparison of the both the devices, these are pretty good scores on such GSI build. Temperature rise to 50 to 65 during the test, but later after stopping the test, it immediately cooled down to the normal temperatures. As we installed this ROM using the DSU side loader, we get the persistent notification in the notification panel to switch to primary ROM by restarting the phone and we will boot into your primary ROM. Here when I restarted the device, device booted into my primary Pixel Experience ROM. But when I again restarted the device, it boots to the port 8 GSI, but the main issue arises here when I rebooted back to nothing with GSI, all the data and the application got deleted on the data partition. And I need to set up the ROM as a clean ROM. I don't know this is because of the DSU side loading of the ROM, because I didn't test the full flashing of the ROM via fast boot, and there we don't know this issue is persisting or not. So what is my final verdict? The bug of Bluetooth, royalty calling, fire Wi-Fi hotspot issue, alert slider, NFC, no fingerprint and no data retention. After every reboot may be deal breaking for lots of people, but other fixes like haptic feedbacks and the other working features of nothing phone 1 on the OnePlus Nord 2 device given me the dope experience that I ever seen on any GSR custom ROM bits. So I recommend you to root and at least try once with the DSU side loader. I will guarantee you will be amazed with the new Nord 2 or any device which is now fully converted into Nothing Phone 1 without the Glyph light and may be called as the Nothing Phone 1 light. That's it for today guys. If you think I help you to give something amazing experience via this video then please do like and share this video, subscribe our channel, press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.